Right. Thank you very much for coming along. Uh, I've been warned in no uncertain terms that I'm not allowed to wander about the stage. So I'm half an academic, and any academics know you need to sort of wander backwards and forwards to shout at undergraduates. I'm going to try and stay still. So my name's Colin Gillespie. I work at Jumping Rivers, perhaps the most mysterious data science company name ever. And I'm going to be talking a little bit about security now. Quite light-hearted, so nothing particularly technical, just a bit of fun in a strange, evil way. So let's get started. Talking about cybersecurity today and how safe people's passwords are, what is one of your online passwords currently? It is my dog's name and the year I graduated from high school. Oh, what kind of dog do you have? I have a Chihuahua Papillon. And what's its name? Jameson. Jameson. And where did you go to school? Um, I went to school back in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. What school? Uh, Hempfield Area Senior High School. Oh, when did you graduate? In 2009. Oh, great. It's like my cat's name and then just like a random number. Okay. Has you had this cat for a while? Yeah, she's my childhood pet. Aw. And what's her name? Her name is Jolie. Jolie. Mm -hmm. So like a password of yours would be Jolie and then a number. Yeah. Like number one? Uh, like my birthday. Oh, when is your birthday? Uh, June 12th. Oh, nice. And what year were you born? Uh, 95. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. So Jolie, six, 12, Nine. 95. Yes. Got it. So you mean to give my password right now? No, I cannot do that. But you, we all want to know what it is so we can tell you if it's strong or not. Oh my goodness. Um, um, let me think. Okay, one is Tel Aviv. Yeah. Four, six, eight. And then Israel. It's, it's only three, but it's, you know, it's, uh, for me, it's strong enough. Ireland, one, two, three, four. Gemma, one, two, three. Spell G-E-M-M-A. Well, There's a whole host of them, and you get the idea of, sometimes you go to security talks, and they're sort of talking about GPG keys and all sorts of funny things, and then someone sticks a microphone and says, what's your password, and people just give them it. Now, obviously, they're all cherry-picked, and we wouldn't be stupid enough to do that. <coughs> I hope. But for, some, for this talk, I did some research, and I don't mean Wikipedia either. I mean Google. So what's a hacker, right? And so hackers are clearly evil people, right? So we can learn two things. You must wear a hoodie. Okay? <laughs> so if you have a hoodie, does anyone know anyone wearing a hoodie in the audience? No, so no hackers in the audience. And does anyone use green text? So if you've got green text, then you're up there in the security realms. So these are scary people, right? You know, they're, they're clearly sort of masterminding the entire world. And they're scary. So does anyone know who this young man is? This fine, upstanding individual is Ryan Clark, who hacked the CIA. Does anyone know who the person next to him is? His mum, who took him to court. And you sort of think, you need your mom to take you to court and you hack the CIA. You know, the, those two things just shouldn't go together. And I've got very mo modest security goal in life, okay? And I only want to get hacked by adults, right? So they at least have to be 16 or 18. You know, a 15 year old boy bored should not be able to hack us and get our stuff. You know, that just shouldn't happen. So, another few. So, so this is the, the Greek Minister of Information Security. Oh, I'll rephrase that. The former Greek Minister. Anyone see anything interesting? The, the post-it note. <laughs> and guess what's going to happen next? Form. Username, Minister, Password, 12345. And again, we, we sort of talk a lot about security and anything. This just shouldn't happen, you know. How can we do this? I'm sure he's a very clever guy, but yet, yeah, I'm sure no one's got post-it notes of passwords on their, their desk. Yes, uh huh. <clears throat> so R Studio in the cloud, right? You know, so we all use R Studio. The, the, they're great, and someone, well, a few people have made a, a container. So you get Rocket containers, so Rocket slash Verse. You know, you go there. You get a sentence that says, Doc is dead easy, and you think, Doc is dead easy, and then you read it and you think, they've lied to me, and so like, three days later you finally figure it out after killing all internet everywhere, but you, you finally get Docker working, or you might have used AWS, uh, and so you can get an AWS container, container that's even easier, you know, you go to AWS, you know, you literally click a button, and it just springs up, you don't need to do anything, 
And these people have been very nice. They made it dead easy. You know, thought of everything. And this was 12 months ago, so it's now changed. So I emailed them. And the default username and password was rstudio slash rstudio. And again, in the documentation, it said very clearly, don't be so stupid, change your password. Well, what people tend to think is you put it on Amazon or you put it in Google and you get a random IP address, you know, 1672431. You think, how could anyone ever find that? I mean, that's just impossible. You know, it's a, it's a that's just not possible. Well, that's Shodan.io. So, none of you have come across Shodan.io. So, it's a completely legitimate website. No, it's not dodgy. And essentially, what it is a search engine that you use to find services that are running. Right? So, if you go to this website, Shodan.io, you can type in RStudio Server. And you get a list of all IP addresses that are currently running RStudio Server. And even the ones that just sprung up yesterday that you're using for teaching, that you think, well, no one's going to figure that out because I've just got it up and running. It's, you know, it's all hidden. And so you can see a, a list of things of countries that are there. Are they using HTTP? Are they using HTTPS? Which cloud provider they're using? You know, so whole one click typing in RStudio. I've now got a list of IP addresses. So that's these things going down here. And I thought, what would happen if I clicked in the very first one? <sighs> I wonder what password I could try. And I've watched hackers, and I've watched CSI, so I know how to do this stuff. <laughs> but I thought, oh, I'll start easy, and I'll go for RStudio, RStudio, hit return, and I thought, oh, crap. <laughs> it worked first time, and it was proper stuff. You know, it wasn't just a little toy example. It was, this is not good. You know, this is dangerous. You know, log out. Don't look around. Don't do anything, because that's just illegal. And then I dropped uh, the folk who organized Rocker, uh, AWS, to please change this. Right? So this is why I've not blogged about this for the last 12 months of just sort of giving people an idea of it's now forced of a password change. But again, we think a lot about data security and all that sort of stuff. And yet, you know, you could write a script that would quickly grab all those IP addresses, write another little script, uh, probably using HTTR or so slightly ironic when you think about it, to then go through all these our studio servers and get access. And that's not really hacking. That just shouldn't be possible. But yet, it is. Bioconductor. Uh, so Bioconductor is great. You know, so it's another R repository. So it's a bit like CRAN. And it does genomics data. So typically, the users of Bioconductor aren't say, casual users. You don't think, I think I fancy doing some genomics research today. I know, I'll download a whole stack of microarray stuff and RNA so you can just have a little play about because that's, that's my idea of a good time. So, don't tend to do that. So anyone who's accessing this stuff is serious. You know, they've got data. They've probably spent a lot of money on experiments. They're big universities, governments, farmers. Not really you and me, but, you know, big companies. And it contains over a thousand packages. <laughs> and to install this, again, this was a year ago, so it's now been changed. You would type this script here, so bioconductor.org slash biosite light. And what the source command does is it says, I have complete trust and faith in this R script. I trust this with everything on my, my operating system that I run as a user. Right? And that's fine, because you could even go and look at this and think, I do trust him. You know, bioconductor, upstanding individuals, really good, what's not to trust. But that assumes you can type, and that's quite a big assumption. And so I was bored, uh, so I was watching some nonsense on TV, and I thought, I know, I'll buy some domains. What domains could I buy? So I thought, I'll buy bio, bow conductor. <laughs> I'm not going to keep pronouncing these, you can get the idea. But essentially, I purchased that, and then I did that, and then I did that, and I did 13 in total. And so I went through, clicked them all. Total cost, less than 100 pound. Absolutely, you know, a lot of money. I thought, I wonder if anyone would be there foolish enough not to type it in. So these are the domain hits <laughs> over a course of four, four, four months. Right? These are all unique IP addresses per day. Some people were persistent. <laughs> if at first it doesn't succeed, just keep going over and over and over again. It will work. So these are unique hits. Right? Now, when you run an R script, you can do anything you want. Right? You know, if I give you an R script and say, I can what, get your SSH keys, 
get you. I can get anything. There's a whole crane out there that can install every single thing I ever want to. And with very little effort, you can make this really malicious. So the sorts of things, oh, I should ex explain beforehand, when people hit my domains, they just got back a 404, right? So I didn't return anything, I didn't give them any R code, you know, I've not done anything illegal, I've purchased some domains, you've hit it, you get a 404 because nothing's there. So these are just hitting at Apache logs. So I didn't want to go down the route of should I display a message saying you've done something wrong? No, nope. pure 404, nothing, I've got nothing, don't sue me. Uh, <clears throat> just to be clear on that. Lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, so you could be really malicious. Uh, and I did sort of mess about with sort of as a side project. So the sorts of things you could do is you can imagine that, well, you can't type it the first time, so you do source and you can't spell bioconductor because there's a lot of letters there. So you can't spell bioconductors and you get my horrible script, but I could install a whole bunch of stuff and then it would be nice and install bioconductor anyway, right? So you've no idea that you typed it in wrong, you just know that you, you know, you've got bioconductor, it worked, you know. And then you could imagine, oh, I know your IP address. So if you ever try to come back to check about this website, I would give you a 404, you know, nothing to see. Also really easy to have a little bit of PHP on this website to essentially go, you know, if you visited the, the, my dodgy domain, it would give you a 404 if you visited using a browser. But if you accessed it using R, I'll suddenly return a message. And again, that took me all of five minutes and I know no PHP whatsoever. You know, it's just a quick Google and that was it. So, in a few months, I think I've now got all 10 universities. So I've got Oxford, Cambridge, Yale, Harvard, MIT, Zurich, you know, I, I got the full mix. I got lots of pharma companies, uh, lots of governments as well, you know, all the, all the ones you think, everything. That's quite scary. And I don't think that that's hacking. You know, it's, it's definitely not CSI, but you know, I got everything. Uh, and all user data belongs to me. So last one, uh, our bloggers. So we don't need to talk about our bloggers, do we? Uh, so let's just suppose for one second that you go to our bloggers and you go, oh, there's 750 our, our, our contributors. Well, that, that's, a, that's a nice number. I wonder if we could scan all these, these 750 people that contribute to our bloggers. Do that, you can write a little bit of our code as well to do it. Let's suppose someone looks at all these blogs and see which one's returned 404. So 404 means that that domain is no longer active. So you've got 750 people who have contributed to our bloggers, possibly some good content, and you think, I wonder which ones of those are still up. Let's suppose, just suppose for a second, that someone would then go and purchase said domains. I don't know who you're possibly thinking of, but let's suppose that that happens as well. And suppose someone creates a quick blog post on graphics and ggplot and just makes it nice enough, not too much effort, but it's, it's a bit of sexy graphics, a bit of animation. And so it looks legit. And because this author's nice, they create a little R package for you to install. So it's thick into GitHub, you know, to install this code, just run dev tools, install GitHub, or however you want to do it. Do you think people would run arbitrary code? Yes, is the answer to that. And I'm guilty of that as well. You know, you see a wonderful blog post and you just run stuff. This one's also a bit more malicious, right? Because I don't actually have to create any new content. I can just look at the old content, change the blog post that our blog is referring to, and it's now got a magically, you know, a domain that sort of disappeared from 2015 to 16, but it's got good historical value from 2012. And the, the domains that this happened to were typically PhD students, you know, they, they fired up a blog, did some nice content and then got a life and got proper jobs and did something else. Uh, as a former PhD student, that is perfectly true. <clears throat> so, this stuff is, it's a hard, it's sort of hard, you know, how do you sort of protect against that in an organisation? So, those are sort of the other things. So security is important. I've got a, another bunch of examples, so I've had longer time. I, I've, I could go through, you know, a few other little bits and pieces of of fun uh, for some definition of the word fun. When we started jumping rivers two and a half years ago, I thought we'd be doing machine learning and lots of training. We're doing lots of training. 
Machine learning, we found that all companies lie uh, and they don't actually need machine learning. They just need to how to do a proper histogram and that would help them. But we spent a lot of time setting things up and doing security. And I think as data scientists, we all program, but we're not all programmers. And the stuff that was sort of mentioned is possibly taught, you know, sort of standard knowledge for anyone with a CS background. But I suspect most people here don't have a CS background, you know, it's not had that sort of training going through. And so one of the things we're starting to do is we're looking to see how to automate sort of monitoring our Studio server, our Studio Connect. And so if you're interested in signing up for it as a beta tester, please just go to that URL and, and enter your email and we'll get in contact. And I don't have my other stuff. But the other stuff that you can sort of start thinking about is HTTPS, HTTP, uh, you know, very easy to do lots of different things with Wi-Fi passwords. Again, relatively trivial things that you could just get access to. Uh, so thank you very much, and hope you found that useful. Thank you very much. We have some time for questions. Okay, thank you for a nice presentation. Let's let's assume that I trust you and that you create Me personally a text. Yes. Or R yeah. or? No, anybody. If, anybody. It's, it's, if you create an R package, then you can trust the, the, the author of the R package. And uh, if you use an Ubuntu system whatsoever, that every package is signed by some, some PGP or whatever certificate, do you think that we should use uh, signing also for packages? My answer to that is yes, but it depends on who you attack, who's attacking you. So if I'm trying to attack you personally, that's hard. If I'm trying to attack anyone in this room and I don't really care who I'm going for, that's a lot easier. So this stuff I've discussed just sort of works because I don't care who I get, you know, I'm going to get people and go to the weakest link. So what you suggested is great. Uh, another one, another thing that I did was I registered the GitHub user Tidyverse. Uh, and created some nice accounts in that. GitHub was actually very good, and within sort of two hours, they said, this looks a bit dodgy. And so they stopped, so no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't quite get it. I suspect if I tried a bit hard, I could fi finally get it. But it's, it's how do you sort of stop the easy stuff? But yeah, you know, signing's good, but if you're still allowing people to install from GitHub, if you're still allowing people to, to do run code, and then I suspect every company in the room wants to hire the brightest and best people. The brightest and best people want to play with the shiniest new toys. You know, if you went to Joe's talk this morning, you go, oh, I want to go and mess about with that package. I go, well, yes, you can. In two years' time, you'll be allowed to do that as much as you want. Well, I'm going. So it's, that's a trade-off we often come across. I sort of dodge your question, but yeah. Yes would be the answer, but I don't think it solves everything. <laughs> 